Thanks so much, Mara. So yeah, I'm Inigo San Jose, technical source engineer at Google in case that you were not in the previous sessions that I imparted. And now I'm going to talk about how we can aggregate P collections and how we can group them uh, using Apache Beam. So well, let me move the slide. This is the agenda that we have for today. I'm going to start explaining what's a combiner. Then I'm going to show you some building combiners and how can we can customize uh, and create our own combiners. Last, uh, I'm going to show you something that we call combiner interface that it's used to create more advanced uh, combiners. And at the end, I'm going to show you everything with a demo as we did before using Colab. So first, what's a combiner, the definition and the types. Combiners are P-transformed that aggregate our P-collection. This is that we are going to output from multiple elements from our P-collection, we're going to output one element or one element per key. We have two types of combiners. We have global combiners that aggregate our input P-collection into, in, into one element or one element per window if we're using Windows and per key combiners that, as the name says, uh, aggregate our P collection of key values into one output per key. And of course, per window in case that we're using Windows. This is an example uh, with a visual queue. So we have some elements here and we're going to perform a, a global combiner. And this global combiner will take all the elements that we have in our P collection and just output one single element. When we do it per key, the same happens, but we output just one element per key. So in this case, all the blues will output this blue element, all the green will output this, uh, all the orange will output all the orange elements and the same with the green ones. Now I'm going to show you some of the building combiners and how we can customize them. Then I will explain something that we call combiner lifting and optimization that happens in some runners. And to finish, to finish this session, um, combiners and, and windows. So these are some combiners that are already pre-built on Apache Beam. These are specific for Python. Java has similar ones, but not exactly all of them. The first one is count. This one I already use on my session from yesterday. It's very simple. The name says it counts the element, the elements that we have in API collection, mean that outputs the arithmetic mean of our P collection, top outputs the n largest or smallest of a P collection given a comparison to list, make it uh, make our P collection into, into a list, to dictionary makes it a dictionary, and latest outputs the latest element to, that arrived to our P collection. In case that you want to check more, more building combiners, you can go here and it will take you to, to the Python documentation for Apache Beam. We can, of course, create our own combiners in case that the building ones are not ready and for, for our use case, or we can do them, of course, globally and per key. Combine globally will be a global combiner, easy to, to guess, and combine per key will be a combiner per key. Once we are using global combiners, uh, we're going to use our custom combiners, sorry, we need to make sure that our logic, when we're using this combiner, is commutative. This is that if we are going to apply a combiner using element A and then element B and combine them together, the result has to be the same as using B and then A. This is the same as in mathematics and the same with the associative um, rule. If we combine A with B and the result of that, we combine it with C, the result has to be the same that combining A with the result of combining B and C. This is because when we are doing uh, combiners in some uh, different workers, when we have more than one workers, we don't have the same order and we need to take in account that for, for our combiner. So the output will be always the same, no matter which workers has which elements on, or, or which order we execute the combines. This is an example of a custom combiner. We're just summing the, the elements that we have. For example, five, five, and seven. If we sum them, we get 12. Now we get this same output and combine it with three, we get 15. We add one and one, get two, and combine everything, and we get 17. In the case we do it per key, it's pretty much the same. We combine just the ones that share the same key, and we get the result. One important thing that happens in some of the runners, for example, Dataflow, it's something called 
combiner lifting. This is an operation that makes the combiner happen first within the worker itself, and then shuffling those elements and performing a final combine. This not only saves a lot of time because we're doing uh, partial aggregation first, but it also avoids issues like hot key or lazy worker. This is an example of a combine without combiner lifting in case that this optimization doesn't happen. So we have some elements in our worker. Uh, for example, the worker one has eight blues, two, two yellows. The worker two has five blues, one yellow and two green. And two green yeah. Now we shuffle those elements. We are shuffling those 16 elements and we need to send all the elements with the same key, in this case, the color. All those need to go to the same worker. So all the blues have to go to one worker, in this case, worker one. All the, the yellows have to go to one worker, worker two, and the same with the greens, worker two. So we have to shuffle 16 elements. Now that we have all the elements in our, in our worker, we just perform the aggregation and we get the final result, 55 for blue, four for yellow, and 12 for green. This is a bad idea because in case that we have a disproportionate amount of elements with a key, let's say, for example, I have 1 million elements, blues, and just a couple hundred for yellow and green. This will mean that 1 million elements have to go to one worker. And this is going to cause some issues. In the best case scenario, we're going to have to wait for that combined result. So we're going to have to wait for this single worker to perform all the aggregation for blues which is going to take a long time. And in the worst case scenario, we can get this worker out of memory and the whole pipeline to fail. How can we fix that? We fix it with combined lifting. Now, instead of shuffling first, we do partial aggregations within the workers themselves, and then we shuffle those. So for example, for worker one, we just combine the blues and, and the yellows, we get 36 and three. We do exactly the same for worker two, and now we shuffle them up and make a final aggregation with the with the, the with the elements that we got from from the previous combine. In this case, we are only shuffling five elements. Before, with exactly the same data, we were shuffling sixteen elements. Now we're only shuffling five, and the elements the, the the result will be exactly the same. You are just avoiding the hot key since now one worker can. If more than one worker could aggregate things together. In the same example, with one million workers, uh, one million elements with blue, every worker will perform its own small aggregation, and then we will shuffle them. And we don't have to wait for just one worker to aggregate absolutely all the million elements. This combined lifting happens automatically on on the runners. For example, with Dataflow, you don't need to say anything extra. Um, apart from the combine in order for, for you to take advantage of, of this optimization. Uh, combiners and windows. Combiners also work on, on a window on trigger, trigger basis, of course. And we will get one output for, for every, every window, depending on the type of combiner. We need windows and triggers in case that we're using unbounded data. This is because Apache Beam needs to know when you need to uh, to, to finish the aggregation. So the idea is just to split our data in, in chunks, chunks of, of bounded data. So we use triggers or we use windows as Reza said on, during his presentation. So we have an example here of fixed windows and we're doing again, the combined globally thumb. So all the elements with the same window, we add them up, we get nine, we get five, and we get three. So we will get one output per window. In case that we have triggers, the same will apply. We will perform the combined operation within the trigger. And depending of, of the type of accumulation that we have, if we have accumulating, like it's in this case, we will add this element to the early firing and get the new result. For example, in this window, we have an early firing of one and six and five, so we get six. We get a new element outside of this early firing and we get three, so we get nine. And the same with the other windows. To finish off the slides and move to the funny and interesting part of the demo, I'm going to explain the combiner interface, why we need this combiner interface, and what the operation, what are the operations that we have in there. The motivation is sometimes we need an advanced uh, way of grouping things. We need a more sophisticated accumulator, or we might need to do some pre or post-processing. -pro post 
that uh, and we might want to change the output types, or we might have a use case that a normal combiner wouldn't work. This combiner interface gives us a lot of control on how things are being grouped together and how we're aggregating uh, our data. Um, we have four operations on the combiner interface. We have create accumulator that creates a local accumulator in, in every worker. We have add input that takes element by element and combines with the accumulator of the worker. Once we combine the current accumulator with a new input, we return an updated accumulator that is going to be used for the next element. Once all the elements have been partially aggregated, we send them to to aggregate them again with something that we call merge accumulators. This takes all the accumulators that we had from the previous from the previous step at input and output one single accumulator. Start outputs just take takes this last accumulator and performs some late uh, some final computations to it and returns the actual value that the combine is going to give us. I have an example here that I hope uh, clears things up. So we're again doing the sum. We're creating an accumulator of zero for every worker. Imagine that we have n workers. Uh, if, I'm going to just throw things on the first worker, but the same will apply to every worker, of course. So we have our accumulator zero. Well, everything that we have on green means that it's an output to the next step. And we take a new element, which is going to be four. We do four plus zero, which is our current accumulator, and we get four. Now we get three, and we do three plus our current accumulator, which is four, and we get seven. Two plus seven is nine. Now this is going to be the final accumulator for this particular worker. We do the same for all the workers and send these final accumulators for the workers to merge accumulators. So we get nine, we get four, we get eight, perform the aggregation again, we define the operation and get 21. This 21 goes to start outputs. And in this example, what I'm doing is just changing the type from one number to a string saying total of 21. So let's now move to, to the demo and we will see this on, on practice. We're going to first install Apache Beam. I forgot to install it before, uh, before running this, apologies for that. Uh, so let me just go first to to explain what we're going to st we'll start the, the demo with. So uh, the first uh, pylon that we're going to have is just using the building combiners. Just as a refresher, we have count that outputs the count of the elements. We have top outputs the n largest or smallest given a comparison. And we have mean that outputs the mean, the arithmetic mean of, um, of a P collection. And we can do, of course, both as uh, globally or we can do it per key. This seems to be installed. Let's run this cell. In case that you get any error when running this cell, you will need to restart the runtime. You can do it with runtime, restart runtime, and you execute this cell again, and it will work fine. So now we have the example with the built-in combiners. Uh, we are creating some elements using create as we did on the previous session. This is because it's easier to use create to generate a collection than accessing a file system and, or, or a database. And it's also faster for you to, to see what we have as, as, as elements. We're creating, uh, imagine this is a table. We're actually creating dictionaries, but just imagine this is a table with a column country, a column population, and a column continent. The next thing we're going to do to those elements is convert them into key values. So we're doing a map function and outputting as a key the continent and as a value the population. Then we are branching this P collection in four, referencing this create step here as we did on the previous session. And we're going to count them. So we do count globally, and this will output the total elements that we have in our P collection. Then we do the same per key. Now we're going to output the two largest elements per key. So the, we will get the top two and a mean per key. We will get the arithmetic mean for, let me make this big, sorry. The arithmetic mean for, um, the, the arithmetic mean of, 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 every, of every continent. Let's run the cell. I'm also printing the graph just so you see that we are actually branching in four and let's wait for the pipeline to run. 
So we get four P collections. The total elements was 11. The total elements per key was for year four, for year year one, for year of two, and so on. And now we get the top values. So for Asia, we have these two values as the top with population. And notice that Oceania only has one element, so we only get one, one value for it. And finally, the arithmetic mean of the population of the data we have. Now let's move to the custom combiners. We can, of course, create them as, as I told you before. And in this case, I'm going to uh, generate some st uh, strings and I'm going to join them together. This is my combine globally. I'm using a Lambda function and just combine them up. And you might be thinking, and you will be right, but, but in you know, this is not commutative. It's not the same doing this and then this than the other way around. And you will be completely right. This is not, this is not commutative. But I just want to show you, I want to see that we cannot rely on, on order when we're doing combiners. The order might change depending on the combiners. In this, in this case, since we're running things on a collab, we're using a single thread, so the order will be kept the same. But if you run the same thing, probably with more elements in Dataflow or on Spark, you will get a different order because we will have different workers across each one of them will have their own elements. And when you're combining, you cannot control which elements will be joined to, together. Also, um, the commutative rule will only apply depending on what you're going to do next. If, for example, this is a bad idea, but for example, I want to join them together to then split them, the output finally, after I join and then split, will be the same. Of course, this is a bad idea. You shouldn't do this to split your words. But just so you get the idea that sometimes what is actually commutative will depend on depend on the use case. Let's run the cell so you can see that we're actually joining things together. And we get the final result. And in this case, I insist the order is kept the same. But in reality, it shouldn't be. If you have more than one worker, the order will not be kept the same. Now, a combiner per key, we're doing exactly the same doing a join, but we have, sorry, different different languages and different lines for, for this. I noticed that Israel was also using uh, Don Quixote as, as, a, as an example. So I, I also use it <laughs> without knowing that. Uh, so yeah, the idea again is that the order is not kept the same. Actually, the um, English version, which is by Shakespeare, is not, is not in order. Just again to insist that we don't have to, we cannot count with keeping the order. Let's run this and it will be as we did before. We get the joints, but in this case, we get key values, the key being the same key that we introduced to our combined per key, and the value will be the, the things put together. Finally, uh, we have combiners working by, uh, by Windows. So what I'm doing is creating a data set with a player column and a score and a timestamp. The same way I did on the previous uh, session, I'm using with a uh, timestamp value to add the timestamp to our elements. This is because Apache Beam needs to know when this element was generated, the timestamp metadata. And this is a way just to add in, uh, add in this very easily. So. This first X will be the element of what, that we're putting. In this case, we're putting absolutely everything. And the second parameter will be the timestamp that Apache Beam has to use. Once we have our elements uh, with the right metadata, well, I'm going to create some key values just by taking the player and the score. So I am actually dropping the timestamp. I don't need it anymore. We're going to create a window of 60 seconds, so one minute. And then I'm going to combine them per key, just summing the, the score. So I'm summing the values of, of these key values. I'm also adding this include window info in IV show, just so you can see the windows being executed through through interactive runner. Let's execute the cell. So I'm going to move this so we kept the, the windows in order. So we have Marina that had a thousand points in the window from zero to one minute. We get Cristina that had 4,000 points from zero from in the window from zero to, to one minute. 
And in the second window, from one minute to two, Marina had 3,000 points, Cristina 2,000, and Juan 3,000. So if we get the values here, for example, uh, Juan was from had elements from the window 60 to 120. And if we add Juan the, Juan's, Juan's score, we get the 3,000. In case that we want to use windows and global combiners, we need to add something that is called without default. This is because the default behavior of the API collection in a combiner, in a global combiner, is to output one element for an empty empty window. This will lead to failure if we don't add this without default. So what I'm doing here is just taking taking the total from before. So sorry, and taking the window from before. So I'm just taking the same value as we did after all this operation and after adding the the window, and I'm just going to combine them uh, globally. Since I'm going to combine them globally, I just care about the values and I don't care about the keys, so I'm dropping them within this map function. Let's run the cell and see that we should get the right values. So we get 5,000 points from the window from zero to one minute, and from the second window from one minute to two, we get 8,000. And you can see that if I take this out, it's going to complain. Just you can see that that default values are not yet supported in combined globally. So I wasn't lying. I know that some of you were saying, "I know you're probably lying." I'm not. I wouldn't lie to you. So let's not try to create our own combiner. I'm going to do this uh, live, but in case that you want to go through it later, uh, you have the solution over here. So we're going to copy the mean function. And uh, we're going to do it the same, uh, our own. So I'm creating numbers from 1,000, actually let's make it 100, from zero to uh, 99 included, and I'm going to calculate the average of that. So I'm taking a list of elements, converting it a list, because when we do combines, we're actually taking iterables, let's make it a list, and I'm just doing summing those elements and dividing them by the, um, by the length of, of that particular list. Let's see what happens if I run it. So we get 93.95. Okay, this is definitely not right. It, not, it cannot be possible that the average of from 0 to 99 is 93. This is way too much. So let's see why this is happening. Let's take this print uh, comment out and let's print what elements are going to be sent to, to our combined function. So we see that we at first get 10 elements and we get the right average. So it's going to be five. But now this element, that this, this output element that we got from this combine is sent to, to the next element, the next set, set of elements. And now we calculate again the average and we send it again to the next set of elements. And we do it again and again and again and again until we get just one number. Okay, this is definitely not right. We don't want to do this. In, in this case, number 5.0 um, is has the same weight as, as the other numbers, but it shouldn't. It should have more weight because it's actually aggregation of 10, 10 numbers. It should weight 10 times more than these numbers here. So how can we fix this? We fix it using the combined interface. So let's take this out. Actually, I'm going to just comment it out so you can compare it. I'm going to create a class and I'm going to whoop, I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it average function and I'm going to inherit from a combine function. Now we need to overwrite the four operations that we had before. So the first one is create accumulator later I'm going to misspell this so many times so probably the first run is going to fail because I misspell some of the of the function there we don't need to send anything to this create accumulator and we need to think what's going to be our accumulator so we need to keep track of two things we need to keep track of the total sum of the elements and the total elements that we have so we're going to create a tuple of, of those so I'm going to have a sum that is going to be zero, zero, and I'm going to have a count that is going to be 
zero again. And just returning this tuple, so let's do some and count. This is going to be the collector that is going to be generated uh, in every worker. Now we need to add elements to this to this accumulator. So we do dev add input in singular, not input, input. We do self. And the first parameter has to be the, the, the accumulator that we had. So let's do accumulator. And the second has to be our input. Now we need to use our input and update our accumulator. So we have the new value, the new sum is going to be accumulator. We need the first value, the sum, so let's do zero, plus our input, the number that we're introducing. And the new count is going to be our accumulator. We just want the second value, the count, and we're going to increase it by one. And just return these two, new sum and new count. So now we are updating our accumulator for every element that it's 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 running. We do this element by element. So we do it first for one, first for zero, then for one, then for two, and so on. Now this, once the ID input is, is done, it will output one final accumulator and we need to merge them out. So let's do def merge accumulators, accumulators. And we need self and we also need the accumulators. By the way, these names that I'm defining here, uh, you can write whatever you want. I'm just trying to name them according to what they actually do. But if I want to call this, I don't know, blah, 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 it would work either way. I would just use blah, blah, blah here, as long as the order is the same. So first accumulator and then input. That's what I, what I meant, sorry. Uh, now, I want to retrieve, so this accumulator is actually a list of all the accumulators that we have across the workers. So I need to take all the values for sum and all the values for count. So let's do all the sums. It's going to be the first value of our list. So let's do x0 for x in accumulators. Actually, let's call it accumulator just a bit. So every accumulator that we have in our list of accumulators, I brought it right, yes. And we do the same with the counts. So let's copy this. Counts. The, the, now we want to retrieve the second value of our final uh, of our accumulators within our list of accumulators. So we just do exactly the same, just retrieving the the second value of our tuple. And we need to sum both of, of those up. So this will be now a list of all the sums of all the accumulators that we had. And this will be another list of all the counts of all the accumulators that we had from the previous workers. So just let me do here an example of how the, it should do like, look like. So for four and two, for example, and uh, two, 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 and we got four. So now sums will be a list containing uh, 444 and 222, and counts will be another list of two and four. Now we need to add them up. So we return the sum of the sums, this list over here, and we also retrieve the sum of the counts. Now this is going to be our final accumulator. So we have add everything up and put them together. Now we need to extract our output, output and self once again, and final accumulator. This is the final accumulator, accumulator that we're getting from merge accumulators. So final accumulator is actually a tuple containing the sum of all the sums and the sum of all the counts. So, okay, this should look like something like this in 666. Six, six. Oof, I didn't choose that as number two for, for this example. 
the final accumulator should look something like this. Actually, let me just change this to make it less <laughs> diabolic. Um, so we actually don't want a tuple. We want the average function. So we need to divide one by the other. So we return our final accumulator index zero, the sum, the, oops, divided by our final accumulator index one. So in this case would be 665 divided by six. And if I didn't make any mistake, this would work, but we need to change our average function into a class and we need to instantiate it as Israel explained in, in the Pardo. So if I didn't make any mistake, this will work. I probably misspelled something here, but let's check it out. Okay, I didn't make any mistake. This is the right value, 49.9. And if you want to double check that I'm not lying to you and you don't want to make it a greater your own, this cell here, so tell us the same value. Okay, yeah, we got it, yay. In case that you want to um, try this on, on your own, I have the solution here. And if you open uh, this, you will see more or less the same function that uh, I did over there. Finally, well, I'm going to show you uh, an example on of a streaming. As I said on the previous session, this cell over here will not, not will not work for you because data flow running is not imported and you will need to change the options uh, to reach your own uh, GCP project. But let me go through the code uh, with you a little bit. The first thing I'm doing is reading from a topic, which is the taxi rides uh, real-time topic, which um, it's a public topic. You don't need to publish anything to it. And it has some information about some taxi rides that are happening on, if I'm not mistaken, New York. So we're reading from that topic, converting it in a dictionary. And we're taking uh, one of the fields that we have in this dictionary is write status. Write status have three options. We have pickup, which is uh, a taxi picking up someone. We have in route, which is a taxi driving with someone in, in the taxi. And we have drop off, which is someone dropping off the taxi, as you can imagine. We don't care about the ones within route, so we're filter filtering those out. And now I'm going to parse our our dictionary. What I'm creating is a key value with the key being the right ID. And I have a dictionary over here that has the right status and a timestamp, which is another field that uh, the topics have. We are do, uh, we're using a window here that is going to be a session. The session is going to be the right ID. And we're going to do a trigger here. Uh, I hope you're familiar with triggers. Uh, Bretha had a great a session, uh, I think was the first for for today. So I hope you 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 get that right. But the idea is that since I know that I'm going to have only two two elements, which is going to be one pickup and one drop off, I'm just triggering the moment I, I have those two. And to accumulate them, I'm just scatting everything out. I'm going to combine those. I'm I'm actually going to create a, a list out of those elements. And once I have this list, uh, I'm going to combine those together. So the output of this combines to be a key and a list of two, two elements. And this map will actually uh, just take the, the timestamp for drop off and the timestamp for pickup. So let, let me go through the through this code quickly. I'm just taking the key of the element. The dictionary is going to be one and I'm creating a new, new dictionary. The right ID uh, is, is the key that we had before. This is a new dictionary and in case that the the length of the dictionary is two, so we have two elements in in our in our combine. Uh, I'm just going to create two new um, new columns, which are, which are going to be called drop off and pickup. In case that the right setup is drop off or is pickup, and the values for those keys are going to be the timestamp. In case that the length of the dictionary is it's not true. I'm just saying like hey, the length was not true and passing those elements. The reason that I need to check for for this is is, is because if, if the moment I create the pipeline, um, there was some taxi drives happening at that very moment. So there will be elements that will not have pickup. There will be elements that we will start reading their date and routes. So when someone was already on the taxi, and we will only get the the drop off. For example, 
let's say I create the pipeline at 12.30 and there was someone that took the, the taxi at 12.20. I will not receive that event on my pipeline. So this way of triggering wouldn't work and the dictionary will not be two, but we will be one. And we will have to wait one hour for, for another event to appear, by the way, since we're doing sessions of one hour. Uh, I have already run this pipeline on my project. So let me show you. We have this one here, the combine. I think it's been running for seven hours, more or less. So just let me go once again through the code, uh, reading from topic, making a dictionary, filtering then roots out, creating key values, aggregating a session window. We're doing the combine and we're doing a map over there. This is how the, the logs look like. So the final row will be our write ID with this unique ID. We will have the timestamp for pickup, which will be this one, and the timestamp for drop off. Uh, by the way, uh, just, oops, let me move once again. In case that you're wondering what this combined per key is, it's actually the same as a group by key uh, that I saw uh, in the previous slide, in the previous session, but I wanted to make it an actual combine, so I created uh, th th this, this function here. But it, it will be exactly the same as a, as a group by. And I think that has been everything I had to show you. I hope it was clear. Let me see in the questions if I wasn't too fast or if it wasn't too clear. Checking Slack. Can you define, uh, Pierre is asking, can you define multiple keys combined by multiple keys? I am not sure I understand this question, can you rephrase it maybe, Pierre? I'm not sure I get it. Um, I, I will I will check if you actually write it. Audrey, is, is this session going late? Uh, yeah, I, I guess it will depend on, on, on your, on, on where you're attending this. For me, this is 10 p.m. So for me, the answer will be yes. Um, can you use some fuzzy logic to associate some elements to a key? Values fitting in some range. Um, can it be a task for the people, the people from to associate incoming events? I'm not sure if I get it again. I'm I'm so sorry, uh, Pierre. So you can. I, I'm not sure if I get it, but you can uh, create whatever key you want uh, from the elements. In, in this, for example, in this case, I was just doing right ID because I know that this was the key I wanted. But if I wanted to say um, Inigo is the best, I could do, and this will be my key. Um, so, okay, Pierre is, is clarifying. Say you want to key by both order ID and currency. Yes, you could do it. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's say, for example, that I wanted to do, it has to be hassable. Uh, that's the one important thing. So for example, you cannot use uh, tuples there. But for example, if I wanted to, you're saying order ID and currency, I could do something like, um, uh, sorry, I'm half blocks. Right, right ID, ID, and since this is a, a string, I can add it to, let's say, random, dot random. So th this will be a different key. Or in the case that you propose that was a currency, I could do X plus currency. Now I will be doing the aggregation with multiple keys. And we will have, I call these double keys. I don't know if this is the official term, but this is like when you have two different keys, uh, you want to put them together. In case that you want to perform then another operation, just taking those out, uh, one idea that I had, uh, I don't know if this is the best, but what I did was, um, let, let me show you like meta code, what my idea was. So let's make it a test actually. So let's say that I'm grouping by key one, I'm going to say a one and value. And so I want to group by a and one. I want to do by this, 
a young one. What you can do is create a new element that will be something like a one and value. Then you aggregate. So you get you get a aggregator. And then you take the key out and do something like a and whatever you want there. You know, new aggregated. Was this the question that you have, like having multiple keys at once? And I think there are not well other questions. Let me check the um, YouTube, nothing there. Uh, Pierre, can you confirm if this was your question? Okay, awesome. <laughs> yes, yes so he finally answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's a delay between life for me and life for, for you. Yes, there is a yeah. delay. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, that's has been everything. I hope you get the idea of this. And thanks a lot for, for your time. <laughs>